Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's I'm in here and I am filming another week in my life as a genetic counselor. I do a few of these videos um, every few months or so. So the last one I did was in the winter and now I'm doing a summer version. We are super, super busy right now. I'm obviously working from home today. So if you guys are on this video and you've never seen me before or you've never heard about genetic counseling before, I would recommend that you go and watch some of my other videos to kind of explain what my job is and what the field is and all of that. So all those videos are in a playlist. I'm gonna put them up on the screen so you can go and check them out. So I am a prenatal genetic counselor, mostly prenatal, some general or preconception genetics, and I'm gonna take you along for the week. I will not be sharing any personal identifying information for the patients that I work with. Obviously, I'll just give you a bit of an overview on the cases that I'm seeing so you kind of see like what I do in the week when i was applying for genetic counseling school or interested in genetic counseling there was nobody out there on youtube that did this so i didn't really know like what to expect and like a day in the life or a week of a life type of thing i'll try to let you guys in on as much as i possibly can i am going to try to update you every day rather than sometimes if i'm really busy i'll have to keep all i'll keep track of all of my cases and then i'll update you on friday or saturday um, but i'm gonna try to do it as every day that goes by it just kind of depends on like where the week takes me we are off on monday with a very very busy day i was off on friday and so i didn't really know like what my monday schedule would be like when i logged into work this morning i work from home two days a week right now so mondays and thursdays i'm at home and then tuesday wednesday friday i go into the clinic all the patients that I see are still virtual. Um, obviously, the clinic started doing that during COVID, and I think it's going to stick around, and a lot of people appreciate it, especially because prenatal, we get a referral and we see someone, they're booked in within one to two days because everything is urgent in prenatal. Um, so a lot of people prefer, honestly, just having the comfort of their home to log in and then not having to take off a full day of work and like drive and park and all that stuff. So... I'm gonna share with you guys at the end of the day today the cases that I'm seeing, um, but I don't really have much time because I'm on my lunch break and your girl's hungry. So we'll catch you guys in a few hours, really only like a second free. Guys, it's literally 8.30 p.m. and I totally forgot to film after I logged out of work. I'm literally sitting here in my pajamas. I was about to go shower and I was just like, oh my God, I saw my camera and I realized. I was supposed to vlog this week so that's fine it's just monday i'm working an extra hour um, throughout the week for two weeks to get a day off every pay period bi-weekly for the summer um just because i have wedding stuff to do i'm attending weddings it's just like a really busy summer so i i like really need that extra time off so that's why i was off on friday last week and so i worked nine hours today so from 7.30 to 4.30, so then I logged out at 4.30. And I had three patients today. The first patient, they had a family history of a stillbirth sibling um, who they suspect had a specific trisomy. And then I say predict because I don't have any records, so I can't confirm or deny that. And then they also had a family history of a um disorder that had been diagnosed recently in one of their relatives um that most likely is de novo so it means it was not inherited or passed down to the family it was basically just talking about recurrence risks for that case and then we um i offered them a karyotype or chromosome testing for themselves because of that stillbirth sibling and if it really was that specific trisomy then want to know was it because of a translocation potentially obviously it would be best if i actually had records from their parents' pregnancy and the genetic test that they've had. So they're gonna look into that. So that was my morning case. The second one that I had was a positive um, QF-PCR result. So this patient had an amnio last week and then one of my colleagues called him on Friday with the result and it was positive. So it confirmed um, the diagnosis, which was of Turner syndrome. And I actually have another one tomorrow, which is also a positive diagnosis of Turner syndrome. So we just kind of met, answered their questions about the condition, made a plan for them 
in the pregnancy. Um, and then the last case that I had was um, a preconception, so general genetics not pregnant, but a couple that is at risk of being carrier for alpha thalassemia, so just arranging extra testing for them. And then we had a meeting, we have bi-weekly meetings and with the prenatal team, so the geneticists and the genetic counselors that are on prenatal to kind of like iron out a few kinks for trying different models and stuff um, because we are so freaking busy and the summer people are vacations and stuff. Um, and that's it, and then just documented everything that I had, did today and then I logged out. So that was pretty much it for my day and I'm gonna catch you tomorrow. I just have one patient for now, but I'm trying to add on a second one. It's Wednesday. I just got a massage, which is why there might be like lines on my face. Um, it's like 6.30 p.m. and I was extremely tired yesterday and I just didn't feel like vlogging to be honest when I got home. Just to give you guys an update on what I did at work yesterday. I had two patients and one was that positive amniocentesis result for Turner syndrome that I told you guys about on Monday. And then in the afternoon, I had a patient with an increased NT and cystic hygroma, so very abnormal, like first trimester ultrasound. Um, and that patient's having a CVS tomorrow. And when I was taking their family history, medical history, there were some interesting things that came out. Most often people's like histories are never like actionable, but this person's was very interesting. They were born with hearing loss and there's a couple other features and stuff. So I reviewed that today with the geneticist to see is there any additional testing that we would offer them. And there is, so we're offering them testing for their hearing loss. I've actually had a few um people that like I've, they're not referred for their hearing loss they're referred for other reasons and then when i ask them questions about like their medical history like the family history like it comes up that they just had hearing loss um like congenitally like they were born with it um and a lot of cases of hearing loss are genetic so that's interesting for people that are interested in finding out not everybody is like what's the reason for that um so that's what i did today and tomorrow i'm working from home i feel like there were so many other things that i did at work that i just like don't remember I didn't have any patients today and I just had a meeting I'm on a DEI committee so we had a meeting for that the students that I supervise like as part of the program that's local to us um, they had their thesis presentation so I watched one of their presentations virtually and I did a lot of phone calls I had results to call from Amnia that happened yesterday who else did I call today I called to check in on another patient oh this is what happened yesterday I totally forgot one of the patients that I met in a previous pregnancy is currently pregnant. I had no idea she was pregnant and she calls me, she left me a voicemail. She was very upset because in this new pregnancy, there happened to be like a soft marker on her anatomy scan. So she called because she just wanted to like talk about it. Um, so that took up like unexpectedly took up a lot of my time um, but that's okay like I'd rather you know be there for somebody and help explain what's going on and honestly just be very reassuring that what happened to your last pregnancy is not going to happen in this pregnancy tomorrow I also have two patients so I'll catch you when I'm at home at like 7 30 a.m obviously at home today and I just finished the work day it's 4 43 so I logged out so today I had two cases the first one was a follow-up for a couple that ended a pregnancy a couple weeks ago a few weeks ago um, because there were ultrasound abnormalities and then we did genetic testing and we actually found something which is very exciting obviously not for them it was a traumatic experience but like for us like we finally like it's honestly i feel like a detective a lot of the times and unfortunately in many cases we're not able to find a cause it could be something else it could be multifactorial it might just not even be genetic but in this case they had a very abnormal microarray very abnormal karyotype um, so the chromosomes were like super wonky um, and we met with them to review that result and then we offered them parental karyotypes which is just looking at the couple's own chromosomes to see was this something that happened because it was inherited and one of you has a translocation which could be the case we're doing that and then depending on that we'll have to meet again obviously if one of them comes back positive as a carrier to talk about like okay what are the chances of this happening again again because everybody's question is just like okay i went through this traumatic experience like what's chance for it to happen again like obviously nobody wants to go through that again so that's what we did for the morning and then at lunch i sat outside and had my lunch i actually had 
I know this is a GC vlog, but not a wedding vlog, but I had a very catastrophic wedding related event. I'm not even being like, I'm not exaggerating. Um, the catastrophic event that happened, really throwing a wrench in my plans for wedding prep. So I was a little bit upset <laughs> over the lunch period. So I decided to sit outside and eat. So anyways, after my lunch, I had one other patient and guess what? It was a hearing loss case. I don't know why this is a hearing loss week or something, hearing loss month really. Um, I don't have a lot of patients with like a history of hearing loss. This one was a little bit different because it was a family history of hearing loss and not a personal history. And that was the reason for the referral. It wasn't like it was incidentally picked up like the other cases that I mentioned. So this person was referred because there's multiple relatives that have hearing loss. And I think I mentioned earlier, most cases of congenital hearing loss are because of a genetic reason. So in this case, it's different because this person doesn't have any symptoms, they're not affected. So I essentially met with them, took all the history, and they don't have any records. They don't think their relatives have had any genetic testing. They're all also overseas. So like getting any records was, is going to be essentially impossible for them. And they don't think they've had testing done. So I reviewed it with a geneticist right after the case and they also agreed that this patient is not eligible for any genetic testing. They could be a carrier of a gene um, that causes hearing loss, you know, based on the family history, they're at a higher chance to be a carrier, but um, there's nothing else that we can do because there are lots, lots, lots and lots of genes that cause hearing loss. So without knowing exactly what the familial variant is, without having the affected people tested, we don't have much to offer this person. So I'm going to call her tomorrow and just say hey just like i suspected there's nothing else we can offer for you babies in ontario have a hearing screen after they're born which is like not ideal um obviously she's not that's not the answer she wants from me but that's kind of where we're at right now um and then i called a couple people and they picked up my phone call today <laughs> and then after that i was basically just like documenting all of that trying to finish a couple letters i didn't get to it and then tomorrow i think i also have no patience tomorrow i'm pretty sure i don't which is great because i feel really behind on my admin stuff like writing all of these letters to the patients to close the chart letters to the doctors like all of that and i have to call out quite a few results as well tomorrow and these are all like not pregnancy related that's the thing that happens when you work in prenatal is that I also do like I said non prenatal stuff and all the non prenatal stuff like just naturally falls to lower lower part of your list so whenever I have a break is when I can catch up on the people that are not urgent not pregnant all right if you can hear me mom <clears throat> it is several days later I completely forgot to end this vlog and tell you guys what I did on the Friday um, because it was a Friday for a long weekend and I was super busy Obviously, I had stuff going on in my personal life. I had to attend a wedding, basically two back-to-back -back weddings, which I'm still in the process of right now, which is why I have all these bags on my eyes, under my eyes. Um, so on Friday, I had no patience. I just had to follow up with a lot of people. Um, one of the patients that I followed up with was one that I met last year and we arranged whole exome sequencing as a trio, which means both parents and the child. A case where the mom, the parents are pregnant again and they already had a child with a suspected genetic condition um, and the ultrasounds were showing that the current pregnancy also had similar features to what their child had and so we were very suspicious of a specific type of genetic condition but the testing had come back normal or negative or inconclusive for that child previously so we were going to do the next step testing which is whole exome sequencing um, they didn't want to change anything with the pregnancy or manage the pregnancy any differently which was fine but it had been a year and we didn't get the results back from their whole exome test so i just followed up with them um like one year later literally exactly a year later and i was like hey did you go for blood work yet and then she told me that they just went for blood work the day before i called because they were out of the country so that will probably be a long time before we actually end up getting their results um and then i had to send some requisitions for the patients that i met throughout the week like on monday um when i met that patient for the thalassemia, I sent them requisitions and then I had some results to call that were not pregnant. So I think I mentioned this earlier in the vlog, my non-pregnant cases, like they get pushed to the bottom of my list like all the time. And so I finally had a couple days like last week where I had no patients booked. So I got around to calling out my results. One was a family history of OTC deficiency, which is a metabolic disorder. So it's carrier testing for that. One was carrier testing for cystic fibrosis, also a family history of that. 
and then I also followed up with a patient that I met with um, not pregnant preconception and they were considering a mosaic embryo transfer so they went through IVF and they had a mosaic embryo and they just weren't sure if they would want to transfer it or not obviously they didn't have any like normal euploid embryos um, and so we discussed with them and I just followed up with her like three four weeks later and just be like hey like just curious like, what did you decide um, are you gonna move forward with the mosaic embryo and she, tell, and she told me that they were gonna move forward with the mosaic embryo and that their transfer date was coming up very soon. So that was interesting just to like follow up with the patient and kind of see like where their journey will take them. They might come back to me later on, like if they get pregnant successfully and they wanna do further testing like an amniocentesis in the pregnancy, not everybody does, but if they do, they might come back to me. So that was interesting. It's always like nice to kind of follow through with everybody and see what happens after I kind of discharge them or I close up their chart, for example. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if these are helpful for you. Um, I can definitely keep doing them. Obviously, this is my entire life, like 40 hours a week. This is what I do. So if you want more, I can totally continue to do them like in the next couple months or so. Um, if you have any questions about genetic counseling, let me know as well. I have gotten a few emails from people over the last few months and I will reply to you. I just am really busy, obviously planning my wedding and just like living my best life. So I will get back to you. Um, um, and in the meantime, I would just recommend that you check out all of my videos because I have a lot of information about genetic counseling, school, vlogging when I was in school, the application process, all of that fun stuff. So if you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more content from me or you have specific requests, let me know in the comments below. And I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.